What I'd like to show you today is a feature from Apple called Assistive Access. And this could help a family member who has an iPad, but they have trouble with all these icons, all the same size, and may look a bit confusing to them. Now, of course, you could drag some off the screen and put them on another screen. But let me show you this new feature in iOS 17. I'll show you what it looks like, and then I'll show you how to set it up later. So the way you use it is you go into Settings and Accessibility and scroll all the way down. It's like guided access in that it'll lock the screen into just this one app and this one app being assistive access. So if you were going to give this to a family member, you would have this all set up and you would have a bunch of icons in here. I'll show you how to add those later, those apps. Let's just start it. You would have to enter a pin, the right pin, and here's what it looks like. And um, it'll stay in this mode. Let me tip it up because I'm shooting this on a desktop and it's, it, um, it doesn't know it's in landscape mode. So there it is. So this is what they would get instead of that confusing screen. They got nice big icons here. And let's just take a look at what they look like inside. Messages. First thing to notice is nice big back button. So whatever they're in, they can easily get back out of. Notice how the contacts all, uh, they have pictures if your contact agrees to put their picture in there. This one didn't. And uh, here's a message from him. Now watch this one other little feature. Dad, it's time to get ready. I'll be there soon to pick you up for the doctor's appointment. So they could then reply to it or uh, with a video selfie or use a keyboard. But again, the big back button. Let's get out of it and all the way back. Same thing for calls, but of course on a iPad, there's no uh, phone number dialing, just uh, FaceTime and um, music. Sometimes music uh, doesn't pop up. This is the first version, iOS 17, that has this, and sometimes it doesn't show music right away. Um, now, uh, the others they support, I'll go to these first. Camera to take a photo, of course, or to look at photos. Now, I have a couple others that I've added here that are not directly um, set up to work on assistive access, but they do work. And in this one, I don't have any mail to look at, but let's go back to calendar. And you, you can see it's okay. It still has the back button, but it's not as nice as those that were directly set, set up to work in assistive access. So now that you've seen an overview, I'm now going to go through the steps to set this up for them. And again, they won't have lost anything. Notice that even if they turn off, they lock the screen, comes back. All they have to do is these taps to get it to go. No pin code. The pin code is if you want to get out of it, to get out of it, then you need to put in that pin code. And I assume you wouldn't be giving them that, that code if you want them to stay in that simple mode. And just look at this now and you'll see we're right back in our normal screen that we had uh, before. Let's just swipe it up here. So, so you haven't lost that in case you want to revert to this if they say they hate it. Okay, my next step I'll now switch to how to, to how to set this up for them. So let me show you how to set it up. First you go into settings, find accessibility, scroll all the way down. It's very similar to guided access in that it will lock the screen. In guided access, you can lock a single app onto the screen. And this could be useful for a kid if you're giving them a game to play and you don't want them to, 
touching the buttons by mistake and exiting. What assistive access does is locks that app in and the only way to get out of it is a pin code and triple clicking. So it makes it harder to make a mistake by pushing the wrong buttons. See right now it's off. Um, you can turn it on and once you turn it on uh, you can only go through these setup steps once. So I'm going through setup here. We're going to set up assistive access. Okay. And who's this iPad for? And the appearance, I suggest this grid mode for an iPad. And now these uh, five apps have been optimized for assistive access. What that means is they have some special features that I'll show you that I'll show you that are pretty neat. You can add other apps but those don't have the same features. So let me show you the first one. Let's look at calls. Now you can say uh, all contacts or just selected contacts. So in my case, I'm gonna do selected. And let me just um, go through and um, pick Okay, you have to set a pin code. Now this is different than the pin code for the iPad itself for the lock screen. So I'm just gonna make it real simple for this case. And enter it again. And you can set a recovery ID. What that is, is that has to do with um, if you forget the pin code, you can, you can set it up to, uh, to your Apple ID or theirs. I'll just say edit that for now and it's ready to use so now I'm going to try using it so I have to put in that code I put in oops <laughs> okay so let's take a look at what this looks like now I have to tell the iPad I'm really landscape so I have to go like this once that's just a standard thing if you held the iPad flat is it shows only that simple one app that I set up there and you notice I have some selected contacts in there so that's not very interesting with just a single app there so let me show you how to set up some more so I'm going to exit this to exit you got a triple click the home button if you had one or the side button if you don't and then say you want to edit exit it put in that code again Boy, one two three four okay so now it's exited it now there was some things that you can only set up when you're entering it the first time now again iPad doesn't know it's on its side let me fix that. Okay, let's go back in again. And I go to accessibility, all the way down. Now this time you see it says it's on, and then there's no way to turn that back off to make those initial settings again, unless you do a reset all settings on your device. So let's go in. And this time I only have that one app, so let me add some others. I want... Now these are the ones that are optimized. So I want camera, and then it's gonna say, well, do you wanna do videos or just, you know, let's say this is for a person, they just wanna make it as simple as possible. So let's just say photos. And so far we have two managed, two apps up there, messages. The same thing, I want selected contacts. I'll go through and you can add in other contacts there if you want. Next, music, let's have that. And in this case, I just want purchase music. And photos, let's see what you can do with that. I want, yeah, sure, I want shared albums. And uh, yeah, those are the ones I'll get. And okay, so those are the ones that have been optimized. So let me go through now and show you, there are some others that you might choose to add like Let's say um, calendar. That sounds pretty good. 
but these are not optimized. And another one you might want is mail, right? Where's mail? Somewhere here, mail. Okay, so if I look back up at these, I've got those now. What's interesting is you can move these around and you'll see what that looks like. So probably they want to do music above that. And camera, yeah, maybe even calendar and mail want to go up a little bit higher. So let's say maybe like that. Okay, so now you back up one and start it. Oh yeah, got to put in the code to get in and that locks it in there. Okay, now that we have this set up, I want to show you a, a yet another place where you can change some settings. So triple click and notice besides the exit, there's a settings. This is different than the original settings that we went through. Notice we have, I suggest dark mode. That's easier on the eyes for some people. Volume control, but there's some on-screen volume control too, and some of the apps have it. Brightness, there's none of the apps have it on screen. So you might want to play with dark mode and may, may, maybe volume control, even though you can still use vol volume on the side. Okay, so let's go back and exit. I want to show you one more thing here. Um, that is... Okay, so you know where we're going here. Of course, we're going here. You will want to turn off the iPad lock screen code because that will confuse uh, the fam the family member. They should have no lock codes when you're using this. Um, okay, where do we go? Accessibility. And down to oh, accessibility. Down to the bottom. And now I want to show you something else here besides the manage apps. Notice you can put the time on the screen, battery level, Siri, if you want Siri on, on there for them to use. They'll be able to do things like ask time, but they won't be able to run a shortcut. Okay, let me show you how to add another app here too, though. So you see the manage apps kind of hidden down below that. Go in here and let me show you one that might be useful. There's an app I wrote called Day Clock. I can tap it and so now it shows up here at the bottom let's just run it and see what happens uh, start again and of course because of my demo mode here I got it flat on the table so this is one that you might want to add for those who have trouble knowing what day of the week it is. Like if they're on and they're retired or they might forget that today's Wednesday or maybe even what year it is or afternoon, morning. One thing nice about this is you can... It's 2.29 p.m. Wednesday afternoon, October 18th, 2023. That can be even helpful if it's next to their bed and they can just reach over and tap anywhere on the screen. It's 2.30 p.m. Wednesday afternoon, October 18th, 2023. Okay, that's it. It's a good, it's a good product. The only other thing I could uh, mention to you is uh, limitations. Um, other than they don't have optimized apps where everything is you can't do any widgets in this. It does not support widgets at this time.